Imagine having the power to change someone's life through a single act. Now imagine the impact of that one act on that person, that person's life, the family, the network. That is what I call the power of one. The power, the butterfly effect, the ripple effect, if you will. Imagine that. I want to share with you a story. In 2006, I was working at the University of Toronto, and I was hired to come in and work with the head of the department and put together and implement some of the strategic initiatives that the chair had had. And I was leading a wonderful team of people, and we were achieving some amazing and wonderful things. And he would often say to me, make it so. And I had no idea at the time that this was a Star Wars reference, but apparently, I look like this guy. Or so it seems. Do you see the resemblance? But I apparently had this ability to make things happen, but it really wasn't me. It was the team and I that were achieving wonderful things. And part of that was that he gave us the room to grow and, and do that and come up and be creative. And through that process, we were actually getting recognition, public recognition at the university. In fact, we won the Stepping Up Award. So fast forward, and I'm sitting at this wonderful table, a huge table of people, a university-wide meeting, and I'm talking about some of the great achievements that we'd achieved. And the head of HR for one of the largest faculties pulls me aside at the end of the meeting and he says, Georgette, how are you managing to get all of this stuff done? I said, well, to be honest with you, at the end of the day when I get home, put the little kids to bed, I'd flip open the computer and I was actually doing a lot of overtime. I said, well, my boss is really great. You know, he was recognizing me publicly. He was sending me lovely notes. And in fact, I was getting like he was giving me some bonuses, which was also really nice. And he said to me, you know, that's great that you're getting these bonuses. But I got to tell you, bonuses, they come and they go. But what if you took those three, four hours that you're doing every night and invested them in yourself? If you thought about doing that, imagine doing a second degree in you. That could pay back in so many ways. Hmm. I hadn't really thought of that. I mean, I hadn't cracked a book open in a really long time, I've got to tell you. So went home that night, started thinking about it. A few days later, I get an email from him. So sorry if I overstepped, didn't mean to offend you. I went, God, dude, did not do that. You let a light bulb. I had actually started thinking about going back to school for the first time in a really long time. And I was trying to think about what degree would be good for me that would actually take my career to a whole new level. As you can imagine, after doing some research, I decided to do an MBA, which then led to a conversation with my partner slash husband about what that would mean for us. So that led to a conversation in the backyard with him one day that went along the lines of this. So I've been thinking. I think I want to go back to school. He said, oh yeah, what does that mean? I said, that means it's going to cost this much. And he said, uh-huh. And so what does that mean? I said, that means no new car for at least a couple of years. OK. He said, it also means no vacations for a little while. OK. It also means you're going to have to take the kids to every swimming lesson for the next two years, because I'm going to be working full time and I'm going to be going to school. It also means that you know we're not going to be seeing a lot of each other, because I'm going to be working full time and studying full time. He said, OK, so you think this is going to be good for you? I said, yeah, I think it's going to be really good for my career. And I think I can get the money back in three to five years. That's what I think. He said, OK, if this is what you want, OK. So I had him on board. I had my boss on board. I had a small little network of friends on board. But then, you know, as a woman who was, you know, very ambitious, career-driven, there were people that actually questioned, you know, whether I was putting my family first, you know, kind of dismissing that. So for the record, in the midst of my dissertation during my MBA, I had a baby. So clearly I was not neglecting my husband, not, not putting my family first. This is my family who's here with me today. So this is my little joke. So that little, little flutter, that little light bulb, you know, sometimes a flutter of a butterfly can actually change, change the direction of your life in the most positive way.
So I share that with you. But I also want to share with you something that happened to me more recently where I impacted someone's life in the most meaningful way that I don't think I realized until I learned more about the story. So in 2020, I got an email from someone through my LinkedIn. And it said this, I'm an alumna from U of T, and I operate a nonprofit. And this woman had asked if she could have a little bit of my time and send me some slides on her organization. I said, you know, I also feel as someone who was in a senior leadership role, it's very, very important that if you have the time, you should give at least 10, 15 minutes of your time to someone if you can. So I did. But I said to her, rather than looking at your slides, I'd like you to present them to me. I'm going to give you 30 minutes of my time. I'd like you to explain to me your organization. So she did. And let me tell you, it was outstanding. Fantastic. The idea was to create 100 black startups by 2025. Fabulous. She had everything she needed. All she needed was a partner. So I said to her, you should be working with universities. Do you know anyone? She said, no, I don't. I said, well, guess what? I've been working at U of T. I have connections. Let me make some introductions. She said, do you think you can do that? I said, absolutely, be happy to. So I did. I made email introductions, and I made some phone calls. So my funny story around that is I made the professional emails, and then I made the phone calls where I advocated a little bit more. They said, you know, it's great to have policies on websites. It's great to have statements that we send out, but it's also more important to put our money where our mouth is. And as a result of that, Melissa is now on the front page of the Impact Report, and so is Nobellum. And I'm so proud to say that they've also raised over $350,000 this year from additional funding. But the best part of the story isn't just that. It's so wonderful to see the success. But prior to all of this, a few months after those introductions, she sent me this email. And she said, thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for making these two wonderful introductions. You've changed my life. I got this email. I get goosebumps when I see it. To this day, I started to cry. It actually inspired an article that I wrote about the power of one. Because those introductions changed lives for her, but they actually changed mine. They changed my life. I'm so proud to say that I'm a senior advisor to the organization. I coach some of the startups in this organization. The impact was not just for her, it was on me. It's changed my life in the most positive way possible. I cannot begin to tell you how. As some of you may know, we recently lost the Honorable David Olney. He was a tremendous, tremendous human being. I had the privilege of meeting David in 2010. When I was the executive director at the University of Toronto, David Olney was actually a, one of our alumni at University of Toronto Scarborough. I decided when I was the ED that I wanted to actually have an alumni event that brought back all of the former student leaders. He was one of them. To my surprise, he showed up. So we became fast friends shortly after that. 2014, as his term was wrapping up, we had a coffee. And I said, David, what are you planning on doing now that your term is ending? He wasn't really sure. And I said, have you thought about teaching? And he showed some interest. So I had the privilege of actually making some introductions. And as a result of that, he became a senior lecturer at the University of Toronto Scarborough. He became the ambassador for the Pan Para Pan Am Games. But he also has transformed so many lives, educated faculty and staff around accessibility, disability, ableism. And his impact continues. And my hope is that with his passing, that so many of us continue to do his work. What's also really tremendous is when we think about someone like David, someone who had so many challenges, the impact of this one person on so many lives and transforming the landscape and our understanding of disability has been huge. One person, the ripple effect of this person. I started out by telling you there was a change in my life around one degree. Well, that one degree led to a second master's and a doctorate and a certificate. They opened, I created an organization called Women Helping Empower Women. I had the privilege, actually, as a result of my education, to be able to teach at the University of Western Ontario, Huron, which led to the book that I created. And that book funds 100% of the proceeds from that book go into the nonprofit. Again, one opportunity, one phone call allowed me a teaching opportunity that allowed me to give back. Ripple effect, that I call the butterfly effect. Right? So at the end of the day, if I was to leave you with anything, a few parting thoughts, it would be this. Be kind and be helpful, because that generosity can multiply in so many ways. If you can help open a door, make a phone call, support a person, just do it. It feels so darn good. You have no idea. And it's so important to pay it forward. 
And at the end of the day, there will always be chaos in all our lives. There just will be. But the one thing I think is really important to remember is among all of the chaos that is in our life, it's important to think about the clarity. There will always be clarity in being the best version of you. So why not you? Thank you.